Okay, so my wife and baby are asleep, and so uh, time for part two on this um, on this website, this no code website project. So where we left it, I think, is um, you know we've got this kind of hero area. It's pure blue. Um, I think I'm gonna see if I can play around and maybe get a background image in there. Um, so I'm gonna use a tool. Well, it's not a tool. It's a it's a service called Unsplash. It's basically free, um, uh, freely usable images. And we're just going to go with something, you know, basic, somebody typing on a laptop. Um, yeah, this looks good. Let's see what we can do. So I'm going to just get the large version of this. And download free is, is one way to do it, but I like to just sort of save image as. Uh, it just kind of saves time. And I'm going to go into, I guess, my downloads. And we'll give this a nice name so that um, it can no code WordPress so that it can give a sense what the page is about. Okay, we're going to go back into Beaver Builder, go to the row, plugin conflict. Okay, yeah, I think this is because I have this, um, I had this page open for too long. Let's just see what the story is. Okay. I'm going to try this again. Yeah, so if you leave uh, you know, an, a tab, an editing tab open, you can get problems. So I'm thinking that's what that was, but let's see. So I'll go to background photo, media library. Yeah, we want a photo, so we're going to upload a new one. We're going to find this thing from our downloads. And we're going to say, you know, WordPress, build WordPress websites without code for the alt text, which kind of describes, um, which basically sort of clues Google in as to, to what, what things are about. So, okay, we got this. We're going to choose it. Now, do we want the full size version or the large version? I think since it's going to be, you know, just in the background, we can get away with large and that's going to make, I mean, full size is, is uh, about 2000 by 1500 pixels, which is a very large image. Um, it wasn't actually huge. Like when I downloaded the, the file, I think it was only about 200 kilobytes, but yeah, I think we can get away with large. So let's do that. And it looks pretty good. I was expecting to maybe have to kind of tweak colors and stuff. I think I am going to just see because I really do like this very bold blue. I think I'm just going to fiddle with the transparency to see. So you can see that the, yeah, the, basically how are we getting this blue overlay? Well, it's, it's the overlay type is set to color and the overlay color is this. And if we want to make the overlay more intense, we just up the opacity, which is this fourth number. So basically these first three numbers dictate what color we're seeing in this color spectrum. This fourth number dictates the opacity or the degree of transparency. So one is completely opaque. Oh, come on. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm going to cancel out of this. We're going to go back down to the overlay. Yeah, so this number, if. Okay, well, it keeps collapsing on me, unfortunately. So. I'll use the slider. So yeah, if we put it to 0.7, it's getting more opaque. If we put it to one, it's all the way opaque. And it's feeling like, and you can, basically what's happening is it's collapsing, collapsing back to a hex because unless you, unless the opacity is something other than one, there's no need to do this complicated RGBA value. And the web likes to think in these six digit numbers. Um, this is, a, by the way, this is a number. This is the number for this shade of blue. Obviously, 0, 7, and 3 are numbers, but also D, B, and E are numbers as well. So it's a, it's a, you know, we count up to 10, but this system counts up to 16. And so D, B, and E represent like, like B represents the number after A, which is the number after um, 9. So it goes up to 16, so we could have up to FFF, but when you go to GGG, it, it's not meaningful. So yeah, so this is like a six, this is six 16 digit numbers representing, not 16 digits, six, hexadecimal, meaning count up to 16 numbers representing this shade of blue. 
But if we start to put transparency in there, then we have to go to this RGBA scheme. So I think I'm going to make the transparency something closer to maybe 0.8. Um, or even 0.85. I mean, we don't need to see a ton of like this guy's hands and this laptop. And it's nice to have this really bold blue going on. Let's try 0.9. That might be a little too uh, subtle. Okay. Yeah, that looks good to me. And while we're at it, okay, good. So we've got these nice color presets. So that's great. So the, uh, the Astro theme actually loaded in like the preset colors that the theme is using. Um, Cool. I think that looks pretty good. So let's just say done for now. Yeah, I think that looks good. I think it's an improvement over just the, the flat blue. All right. Well, a lot of things we could do next. Let's check out the about page. Okay, looks pretty decent. Um, let's see what we can do to start to get our actual um, about page content onto onto this page. So I have like an, what I thought the about page could be is basically just another paragraph about what the website is and then a contact form and then maybe an FAQ just so we get kind of all that stuff together because we, we don't need it. I mean, there's no need to make a ton of pages for, for, I think, similar information. So probably the easiest place to start is with the FAQ. So I'm going to go to the text view on this, on this, um, this element. OK, it's still thinking it's a heading, which I don't really like. No, I guess that could work. So we could say FAQ typography is the HTML tag is an H2. Cool. And then we can just paste in our, our text in. Um, okay, let's just save this and see if it updates. Hmm, didn't work. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, there we go. So, now, you see what I'm doing here with these three hashes? This is something called uh, Markdown. It's a, here, I'll, sp I'll spell it out, Markdown. It's a, it's a way to easily write text that converts into HTML. And um, the, the WordPress Classic Editor and Beaver Builder they know how to interpret markdown. So when I hit enter here, th those three little hashes turn this into an H3 element. An H3 element is like the third largest heading type after H2 and H1. And so, yeah, it just makes life easier because I've basically typed out page content just in this text editor called Sublime Text. Um, but, you know, I know the parts where I want, you know, italics, for example, or the parts where I want headings. So I've used markdown to just type those. So if I... You know, if I want to make something italic, well, obviously now that it's in here, I could, I could just hit Control I and it goes and it italicizes. But um, I could also, I believe, do an underscore and then another underscore. Well, maybe not. Maybe maybe that part of Markdown isn't in, isn't in WordPress. Anyway, um, okay. Now you'll notice that the paragraphs aren't working. So let's see why that might be. I think it's because this is a heading element. Yeah, so we're going to have to get rid of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, bring out all these markdown headers so that we're good. OK. Then I'm going to just grab this text and copy it, I guess. And I'm going to, um, instead of using a heading module, which they seem to be using a lot of, I'm not exactly sure why, I'm just going to use the straight ahead text editor module. And I'm going to repaste this uh, the same thing in there. So now we've got H3, H3s, and then you can see that the paragraphs actually come in. Now, obviously, we have a problem, which is that the font is not the color we want. So we're going to have to go here. We're going to have to say style. Um, 
let's see, color, here we go, color. So, and as I mentioned, these numbers go from zero to F. So F is the highest number you can, you can have, and six Fs is the most color, the most of every color you can have, and that is white. So we're gonna do that, and we've got this white text now. Um, and then since we got rid of that heading, we're gonna just say FAQ. Um, what I'm going to do is add two things in it, FAQ, and that makes it an H2. So, yeah, that's good. Um, and I'm just going to delete this heading with the bad paragraphs. When I say bad paragraphs, I mean that there's not a space between the end of this paragraph and the start of this one. And WordPress will automatically put those spaces in there. So if you don't see that, you're, in this case, it was the wrong kind of Beaver Builder module that we were using. So moving over to the text editor instead of the heading got us these paragraphs automatically. You shouldn't ever really be in a position where you're having to manually do this a bunch of times. Like that should not, before you resort to that, figure out why the paragraphs aren't showing up. All right, so we've got this. Um, oh, these three dashes are supposed to turn into like a long dash in WordPress. Um, but that's not happening, so I'm going to do a trick, which is, this thing is called an M dash. And I'm just gonna Google the, the word M dash, and I'm just gonna find an example of an M dash. I'm gonna go back to this thing. And I'm gonna go to text, because I don't want there to be any danger of me bringing in formatting along with this thing. And I'm just gonna paste it in. So I'm just pasting that M dash in. Let's find three dashes. Okay, so there's another example. So I'm just gonna paste that. And yeah, so that'll do that. Okay, great. So that's the FAQ section. Oh, now the thing is, you don't want people reading text that's very wide like this. You don't, um, it's hard for the eye to follow like a long horizontal line like this. So I'm gonna go back in and just for, at least for the time being, I'm actually gonna duplicate this row in this entire row, get rid of all this stuff that's that I don't want. And we're gonna change the row settings and we're gonna just see how the, this FAQ would look maybe at 900 pixels or maybe, let's say 940. Is that an improvement? I mean, it feels, for some reason, it feels like we could even go wider, maybe 980. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm seeing a big, big old margin on this. On the, Yeah, so there's 100 pixels of top padding. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. Um, we'll leave the bottom padding for now. But what I am gonna do is go to this row and get rid of the bottom padding there. Okay, and we can add some more back in later if we want, but let's start with this. Okay, so that's the FAQ section. I think this is more readable. I'm still not in, I'm, we'll have to figure out design-wise how we, how we deal with like the different, the different widths. There's, there's a lot of things we can try. Okay, so I think what I wanna do next is, um, I don't know if I wanna keep this section, but we can play with it, it's kind of nice. So, We'll just grab this, grab this like little self description thing here. Um, and again, they're they're using they're using this header thing, heading thing all the time, which is fine. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just put these things in italics. And actually, maybe I don't want to toss size right. Okay. And you know what? I don't want to deal with like the 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 way that this heading thing doesn't do paragraphs. So I'm just going to copy this, and I, I just want to see. Okay, so yeah, this is an H2 that says leading expert. So once again, we're going to take this text editor, mo editor module and just drop it in here. And we're going to just paste this in. 
And sure, we'll say leading expert just so it says it again. Leadering, leading expert. Okay. And we'll just delete this heading module. Okay. All right. So, what do we actually want to say? We want to say mm, about. Let's give this a little more breathing room. So why is it compressed into this space that it's compressed into? So this is the row. And let's see. So let's look at the columns. No, I don't want to reset anything. What are we looking at here? Does this have a set width? Okay. Um, okay. Hmm. I'm going to start deleting things. OK, that had a strange effect. Column settings, there we go. So it's 50% and 50, I'm assuming 50%. How do I get to the column over here? I'm going to go ahead and delete this as well. All right. Uh, Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and save for now because I, I want to go in and start changing stuff. So I want to save my changes so far, and then I want to figure out, like, what's going on here. So what is parent settings? Minus 200 pixel top margin, why? Okay, let's just get rid of that because it's we don't need that. This, yeah, this doesn't need a 200 pixel top margin. So, I mean, 200 pixel bottom margin. So we'll get rid of that, and we'll get we'll go ahead and get rid of the uh, the 250. We'll just make this 50 pixels. That seems that whole thing seems easier to me, rather than 250 and minus 200. So okay, we'll we'll save our changes there. All right. Then let's look again and see how these columns are being done. What if I duplicate this? So now we've got a three column layout. Okay. Okay, well, let's just look at these things and see. Okay, they have zero margins. Container elements a div, that's fine. Equalize heights is yes, that's fine. The background of this column is just this person's photo, which is fine. Okay, we've got a ton of, ah, okay. We've got a ton of padding. Now, I don't think it's gonna change anything on this column, but presumably the other column has the same thing going on. So I really wanna be able to edit that column. I think I'm gonna move yeah, I'm going to move this over here. See if I can. OK, you know what? I'm going to put it under here. I really just want to be able to edit the column. OK. That was a mistake. OK. Uh, let's see. Column settings. All right. 
Hmm. So looks like they've edited it in a way where it's really hard to change the column settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this text box out of the column. I'm going to do the same. What do we got? Is this one or two things? Hopefully it's just one. I'm going to move this heading out as well. Okay, good. Now I can edit the column, which is, this is an awkward way to do this, but you know, whatever. So yeah, we've got 100 pixels of padding, which to me is too much. I like the, I like the way it is. I like the way it's designed, but I feel like the, the padding is just too much. So now that I moved the heading out of there, I can move it back. And yeah, you can see the, the padding is not as extreme. Okay, so let's... All right. That looks pretty good. I mean, and again, this looks a little bit less like snazzy than the original, um, like what we started with, but I don't kind of need all that. Like I don't, uh, I'm not gonna keep things on the page just to keep them. Okay, so let's see. Let's just make sure, sure this looks decent on the phone. Yeah, it looks okay. All right, okay, so. Obviously we want to change this guy's picture. So let's close the customizer and open Beaver Builder back up. And obviously I don't really want to just use that picture of somebody's hands on a laptop over and over, but <laughs> maybe just as a placeholder, we'll put that in there. Okay. And I kind of like the orange overlay that they had going. So I'm going to actually, so like the reason that image was orange is because the image itself was orange, but we can, you know, obviously get the, the same effect once again by creating an overlay that's, that's mostly opaque. Um, all right. Yeah. I mean, this does, this doesn't look great, but Probably I would actually want to maybe put my own picture in there. I guess I can do that. So let's, uh, we're going to change out the picture. We're going to upload and I'll have to look for um, a picture of myself. We've got some pictures. Brad and David, Fred Meyer Square. Yeah, let's start with this. Okay, Fred Meyer WP. Oh God. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and choose this. Okay, so that's a start. Um, let's see what happens if we. Obviously, you don't want just like some sort of light orange creepy background. Um, so I think I might just drop the overlay and see how we do. Yeah, that doesn't look great. Um, I wonder, can we desaturate the photo in any way? That would be cool if we could. Desaturate means like remove color. Hmm. Well, I guess what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to open an image editing program, which is called, uh, I obviously I hate the name, uh, but the name is uh, GIMP new, Im uh, new, like GNU, um, meaning open source, new image management program or something. I, I can't remember exactly what it stands for new image manipulation program, I think. So what uh, GIMP is, is it's uh, it's basically like a free open source kind of Photoshop clone. It's not, it doesn't have everything that Photoshop has in it, but it has enough to desaturate this image. So let's go ahead and do that. New image manipulation program, yeah. Okay. So while we're waiting, I'm just gonna publish this. 
And I don't necessarily see a need for this spacer over here. I don't think anything's going to change if we get rid of it. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. I don't think anything's going to change if we get rid of it. No, nothing changes. So yeah, we'll just get rid of that spacing element. Okay. So this is still loading. So maybe we'll have, what, about FAQ and contact. So maybe I'll go ahead and create, just sort of create like a little placeholder for, for contact. So I'm going to duplicate this entire row once again. Move it under this thing. OK, good. So. Yeah, they're using headers once again all over the place, which are not the most useful element. So we're just going to make it a text editor. Contact us. Uh, wrong code, wrong uh, text question. So let's just do very simply this, and later we'll put in a contact form. And we're going to go into style, and we're going to set our color once again to F six times, which means white. And then we can just delete the rest of this row. Then we'll publish. Okay. Oh, and we have to get rid of the giant top padding that this thing has. We don't really need all that. Okay. All right. So in here, let's um, let's see how they're. Yeah, their file opening dialog is pretty primitive, so we're just going to use the Windows file browser thing. And we're going to look for me. Uh, square. Nope. Hmm. Am I looking at the in the right place? I think I am. Fred, oh, Fred Meyer Square. All right, fine. So we're just going to drag this over here. And let's just start out by uh, colors. Let's just go ahead and. Oh, uh, actually, there's a, there's a way to do it desaturate. Let's just say desaturate. Yeah, that looks OK. I think we might want to um, up the contrast a little bit. OK, well, that's obviously horrible. But if we up the brightness and the contrast at the same time, it might be a little easier to see. So basically, if you increase contrast, it like you'll see I'm going to undo my changes. And you see how like a gray f filter comes over everything? Contrast has the effect of like taking out grays and making everything very, very sharp, like very bright, uh, very bright or very dark, not in the middle. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily a good thing. Like if I up the contrast by a ton, it you know this is what you get. Everything is like basically black or white. So, so the question is, can we get can we get exactly the balance we want? I mean, this looks pretty good to me. So I'm just gonna. Um, control shift E, which is export. Sorry, control shift E, which is export. Um, we'll just export that PNG. All right. Now we go back to Viva Builder and we're going to edit this thing. And let's look for square. 
Yeah, I mean, the Windows search <laughs> thing is so bad that it's not even really worth using. Okay, whatever. All right, and we'll just maybe give this the same alt text as the other one had. We're gonna choose this photo. One nice thing about black and white photos is that they're way, way, way smaller because you don't have to store color information, or they should be. Yeah, I mean, this is about mm, only two thirds as large as the corresponding image with color, so that's nice. It's still pretty huge for a smallish image, 300 kilobytes. I don't know why it's, why it's so big. Um, I might want to come in later and do some image compression on this so that it's not an unnecessarily large, large image. But anyway, okay, so that's a start. And then we could probably put an overlay back over and it wouldn't look horrible. So, yeah, I think that looks kind of good. Let's see exactly what level of transparency we want. It doesn't look great. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go with 62%. Yeah, I don't know if I love this or not, but I'm, uh, I'm willing to live with it for now. Okay, sure. So, I wonder if we should have upped the contrast even more. No, I think this looks okay. All right, so contact us. Um, all right, so let's, let's look at how to get a contact form going. And this thing installed some form plugin called WP Forms Lite. Uh, I don't know what that is, but I have a form plugin that I like, and it's Gravity Forms. Now, Gravity Forms is, is a premium plugin, so um, there's no free version, but it's so worth it that uh, it looks like my wife is awake and is... Um, chatting to my baby. So maybe I'll actually pause it here and we'll call this the end of uh, part two. <laughs>